progress. Yes. However, okay. we're going to get the feedback. There we go. Okay. We work Can you hear us now, Jeff? Okay. Yay. Yay. Good. Yeah. Thank well, you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, first item on our agenda is uh, the whole public hearing on the uh, annual updates, the general assistance ordinance appendices. And uh, pursuant to that, we're holding a public hearing this evening, October 12th. Uh, convening the public hearing, I'm saying at 637. Uh, at the Town Hall 180 Main Street to receive public comment on the annual updates to the General Assistance Ordinance Appendices. A copy of the updates is available for viewing at the Town Clerk's Office. 
Are there any members of the public that wish to speak to this item? Okay. Uh, any uh, comment from the uh, from the council? I have none. Okay. All right. Uh, Barbara, anything on that? No. Uh, Never. No. 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 standard. Okay, so what we'll do is we will uh, close the public hearing at uh, 5 6 41 on the computer. Okay, so uh, we have uh, three councillors present this evening. Uh, Mallory's out on vacation. And uh, so the first item on the agenda is the approval of the following minutes. The Town Council of September 28, 2021. I do have several um, edits on that. Uh, so what I'd like to do is go through those beforehand. Yep, before we, yep. Yeah. Uh, under unfinished business, um, um, there's, there's, there's a couple of items that we're, we're confused. I believe I added at the end of the town manager's report uh, the request to schedule uh, two special town council meetings on uh, October 5th and 6th at 4 p.m. town council uh, with one item agenda of those special meetings, which is to uh, uh, pursuant to M one MRSA section 405.6A uh, town manager replacement. I believe that should be uh, following the town manager's report. And, um, and then, uh, then the after the colon following licensing, I believe that sentence should say there is uh, there is a calendar event uh, related to the to the topic, and that was advertising that. Uh, October 5th, 2021, Town Council Planning Board workshop with the town attorney present via Zoom to review the municipal authority around caregiver care licensing. So that, that's really the only thing that belongs in the medical marijuana caregiver licensing. Um, and then uh, going over to uh, new business uh, number one, uh, First Baptist Church, um, the word following condition, the second second line uh, after conditions, comma, it should be appurtenances, appurtenances, A P P U R T E N A N C E S, and delete pertinences. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, could you repeat the spelling, correct spelling? A P P U R T E N A N C E S. Thank you. We had a doozy with that one. Trying to re-listen to that. I was like, yeah. Trust me, it was a doozy for me to say. <laughs> yes, we, we remember. <laughs> I was like, Barbara, come listen to this. I struggled with that. Yeah. And and then uh, on the solar energy moratorium, the, uh, the moratorium was adopted with emergency preamble effective uh, 09-28, 2021. We should delete, um, marks the end of That's all I have on that. Mr. Chair, I move we accept the town meeting minutes from September 28, 2021 with the corrections. Second. Uh, because we have uh, three councils present, all of our uh, votes need to be unanimous in order to, to pass. Okay, uh, all those in favor of uh, uh, approving the town council minutes of September 28, 2021 with corrections, say aye. 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 That motion passes 3-0. Uh, town council of October 5th, 2021. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the town council meeting minutes from October 5th, 2021 as written. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of uh, adopting 
for minutes. Say aye. 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 That motion passes three zero. Uh, town Council of October 6, 2021. Mr. Chair, I move we approve the Town Council special meeting minutes from October 6, 2021 as written. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, approving the minutes, uh, say aye. 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 That motion passes three zero. Okay, there's a note uh, on the agenda that says the minutes for the public hearing and board of assessors for 928 are not yet available. So we'll take that up at perhaps our next meeting. Uh, next item on the agenda is the treasurer's warrant in the amount of $1,187,395.89. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the treasurer's warrant dated $1,187,395.89, dated 10-7-2021. Can we amend that to in the sum of? You went with dated twice. Okay. I hate for someone to hear it and correct us. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mr. I, it's, it's okay. It's a just we just want to amend it to in the sum of. So Thank so you. amended. Thank you. <laughs> Second. No worries. We have a crowd. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Um, any discussion? I just wanted to note the school payments in there for a little over seven hundred thousand. Ouch. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of signing the warrant, say aye. 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 That motion passes 3 0. Public comment. Uh, uh, to any, uh, any member of the public wishes to speak on any items that are not on the agenda? Now's the time. Yes, sir. Um, so we're a little nervous. Uh, we've never been to a, a council meeting before. Um, well, the first thing you can do is just tell us your name and your address. That's usually what we do. Yeah, my name is Adam Jacobs, and this is my wife, Katie Jacobs. Yeah. And um, we have some family property over on the corner of Old South Road and 236. It's a little tiny um, shop. Used to be like a CD store. It's been a flower store. I think years and years ago, it was a little gas station. It's been everything. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe that the zoning was changed um, where we're not allowed to turn it into any kind of a retail or anything like that. So we really- You're not allowed to sell out of it anymore. Here to find out if there's any way or what we would need to do to- maybe ask to get it rezoned. Um, we run a small business out of our house. We make like custom t-shirts and mugs and keychains and stuff like that. Um, most, of, most if not all our business is online, um, but we're kind of outgrowing our home and we have access to this building uh, and it would be nice to have a place for people to come pick stuff up or come actually touch and feel the stuff that we make. Um, so I guess that's really where we're at. So I came down come. and I talked to the code enforcement who yes. said that um, if the zoning has been changed and you can't sell out of it anymore because it wasn't something for more than a year, like you, it, I, I guess it's been more than a year since it's actually been open to the public. Um, and then the woman, the secretary or the front desk woman told me to come to a town council meeting and this is where we would start to see what we would have to do. Did the code enforcement obviously use any words like uh, uh, non-conforming use or any, any terms like that? No, he, to us. not No, not when I was there. Um, he might, it's my grandfather's, like it's, it's his property and it's his shop. Yeah. So he might've spoken to him um, I don't know anything like that. What he was told, what I was told when I went and spoke to him was that because it hasn't been sold out of for more than a year, that that's why you can't anymore. So if, if, if you go back to where the issue was, there was a shop and I don't remember if it was the CD shop as the final or flowers. That It was the Dragonfly Woman. Okay. So that <laughs> so which I think was about three years ago. Right. So that that business um, that business went out, and then the mobile food vending barbecue place came in. Oh, and they had, couldn't do food. They had inside. excellent food, by the way, um, but couldn't be there because that other business had gone out for over a year. Yes. Because that was non-conforming. 
Okay. okay. So that means they'd have to, and correct me if I'm wrong, but they'd have to go back to the planning board. No. Code officer? Code officer. Code officer to start there at the owner of the property. Right. Right. So what basically what it is, if it, my understanding, uh, the code enforcement officer is the one person in town who's mm -hmm. authorized to interpret and enforce the ordinances. Okay. We, we don't do that. Okay. So this is kind of a friendly, you know, and so when I don't want to step on the code enforcement officer shows yeah. or anything like that, but yeah. that's our understanding of what the status is at this point in time. Okay. So um, that would be the, you're, you're really your only recourse at this time, unless the- uh, So he has final say, no matter what, over who can and- like It's on the books right now, yeah. Okay, okay. all right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's it. I mean, at least we know more now because we really had no idea. Nobody seemed to really know. Um, well, there's a long history on that on that property. Yeah. yeah, and that well, then that's kind of part of it is where we have, you know, it's the it's family, and we hate to see it just kind of go to nothing. And where there's still something there, like structurally, that absolutely needs some money to really bring it. Before I would feel comfortable bringing a whole bunch of people in it. You know, it's not a very big building, anyways, as you all know. Um, but to bring any people in and out of it for it to be safe. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to see it, you know, um, stay in the community. But the only other thing for you all to look at is that intersection is going to change next year. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. South, South Street. Yeah. 91 236 mm -hmm. is part of MDOT changing that intersection. Do you know what the change looks like? I, I've seen pictures, but I've seen nothing concrete yet. Yeah. So it's just something to keep in the back of your mind. Right. While well, you're, while you're talking to Joe, we don't know what that intersection yeah, okay. is going to look like. We do right. have tentative plans from MDOT as to what that intersection right. should look like. But I mean, because, you know, from our point of view, one of the things we're thinking, if there's a really good reason why it shouldn't, there shouldn't be something there and an intersection, absolutely, I completely understand, understand that you know, depending on what it looks like and all that. Um, but if they can't, if anybody can't really give us a really good reason why we, you know, couldn't, it just kind of baffles me, I guess. Start back again with Joe and okay. see if yeah. we, we can do that. The belief is that it's non-conforming with respect to the code and zone. Okay. okay. All right, well, thank you guys very much for your time. Thank, thank you. Sure. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck. All right, thanks. <laughs> Have a good night, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else uh, on public comment this evening? Okay, we'll move on to uh, town manager report. For the highway building update, uh, the electrical was to be started today. And I did put some progress pictures on your table so that each of you can see. Um, the flooring also went down last week. And we've gone over on a couple little line items on the budget, but overall we're still, still more within budget and everything's going very well. Um, there was, excuse me, correct me, but there was a point in time where uh, when we were ordering the building, you know, as, as a, you know, whether, whether manufacturer, whether like it yeah, seems like yeah. every seven days there was a certain percentage increase. Yeah. Is that, that uh, kind of cool off? Yes, we we have all that material, um, and it climbed and it climbed and it climbed, and then actually because we kind of had that postponement, it actually went back down just a touch. But then the concrete went up, so we had a couple of things come up and come down, and but overall we're still doing good. Jay and I are watching, you know, the line like a hawk. So watching that budget. So yeah, we're doing good. Thank you. Welcome. Um, I have also filled out the ARAP grant application for the town to receive the first half of the allotment, which is about $350,000 that we'll be receiving shortly. Um, there are very strict guidelines on how we can spend that money. It's communication, elderly housing, water and sewer infrastructure, um, additional uh, pay for essential workers that we can go back pay to. Um, I'm still working and learning on all the specifics on how we can spend the money. Um, I did think that it would be nice if we could take a reasonable amount of money and look to see how we could give a little bit to our essential workers who did work throughout all the pandemic. 
and that would be a small drop in the bucket compared to you know all this money. I've already talked to Tom at the sewer. He's got a lot of big projects that he wants to do for CIP. There's no way we can spend all this money. So I thought, why not share the wealth with the water and sewer companies in town too? So those are the kind of avenues I'm looking in to make sure that it's all gonna fit into the parameters of how we can spend this money. So I'm gonna let you know that that's more to come. I just filled out the application at this point. So the audit has been going well. Peter Hall was here for four days um, in late September and the rest of it has been remote. He is still finishing up. We should have a rough draft of the audit within a few weeks. Um, there's no findings or anything at this point, but he is still wrapping things up. He will be here to present to the council. Um, the first meeting in December is what's planned tentatively. So, and with all that, we do have some preliminary numbers for ending uh, fiscal 21, that the revenue is $850,000 over budget, which is great. Um, 445,000 of that comes from the additional revenue sharing and the change that uh, Governor Mills had done. So that's a huge portion of what that extra money came from. And about 260,000 over budget in vehicle excise tax. Apparently everybody bought a new car during the pandemic. So <laughs> that definitely helped that line too. So that's the bulk of where the extra came from. And the expenses are under budget by about 380,000. 200 of that is 380,000 under budget. 200 of that is in the highway due to the mild winter. We didn't really use a lot of expenses there. Um, so that's all good. And that's still preliminary. I think may have some year end entries for me to post, but I haven't said anything about it yet. I don't foresee anything that will change those numbers much at all. Um, we are actually still having quite a bit of issues with the HVAC system at the library. Both Jay and I have been talking with Karen to try and gain all the history about the building and the heating system that we can, um, knowing that Karen's leaving in a couple of weeks. And Jay has stepped up and actually started talking more so geothermal, who is the vendor trying to maintain the system now. And we basically want to talk to them about, is it worth putting money into this? Um, the vendor geothermal said he's at a point now where he's putting his hands up there's a, a looping issue, which is all happening in the ground um, with all the wells, looping around and coming back into the building. And because they didn't install it, and we don't, or we can't find to date plans that show exactly what the looping system looks like in the ground, how it's made. So he can't go forward with maintaining flushing and know how to fix it if he doesn't know what's there. So Jay and I are working at called civil consultants. We're talking to the architect out of Connecticut. So we're really trying to gather all this information to make a knowledgeable decision. Do we wash our hands of this and buy a new boiler with the extra money we've set aside for the library and know that they're gonna be warm this winter? Or do we try and find out and see what the answers of this are and reassess at that point when we have this extra information? So at this point, we're really starting to do a little research, but the extra money we set aside last year for the library, I want to make sure we spend that wisely. Seven yeah. years we've thrown good money after bad trying to fix that. That I've been on this council. Yeah, it, it's, it's junk. And you know, it's time to move on. Last last winter they were warm enough. The winter before they were wearing hats and long johns all, all day. We, I we mean, that's not a lot of money for a system that just bite the bullet, cap it, and yeah. put a heating system in the library. So the, the other avenue would be to. I don't know if which Richie is still active as a contractor or construction manager, but perhaps that would be another avenue to see who the uh, mechanical contractor was at that time and see if they have any as -builds. I did see a find a book in John St. Pierre's office that has that Richie name. It looks like it's just more like information basic general information about that kind of a system, not specific to what we have. Do you know offhand if there's other people who actually installed the original? No, no. They, they, I, I forget if they were working as either a general contractor or okay. a construction manager, but either way, that, that that's the, the, the lead lead contractor. I have and then, seen that and name. Then, then that, that, uh, that lead hires subs to install. Yes electrical, mechanical, right. you know, all the other systems. 
you know, it would be everything to go into it. And so the dog is broken down. Um, the other thing to check would be to go back in the files and check the payment applications that were submitted periodically through the construction. Yeah. And then there'll be line items under that for I, I various that. vendors who would supply the equipment and then also the contractors that installed it. And that should be broken down by uh, by category. Yeah, it, it was broken down to a certain degree. I did find that um, town manager's office. So, so we're just we're we're trying to just gather every single little piece of information that we can find and provide it to that vendor at this point and collectively try and figure out what's the best. Yeah. Uh, before we, we pull the trigger on yeah. anything, we should it should be a, it doesn't have to be extensive. But there definitely should be an alternatives analysis to see where we are going ahead and definitely what what the what the best course is. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to work. We've been working on that for a little while. Yeah. So that's a big one. Um, twenty five Tamarack update. I don't know if you guys have heard complaints about the um, Sorry, correspondence RV that's been people have been currently living in. Um, so it's at the point where. Joe has been sending sending them letters. We've talked to Phil Saucier about it. We did a final, Phil wrote up, drafted up a final letter today to, that we're going to send out again, certified. Unfortunately, there is over 80,000 cases in Springdale District Court sitting there waiting, not even being processed. That's the point of the next step on this particular process. So I just want to give you an update on that in case you guys are hearing complaints on that as well. That we're pending a court date. Okay. We've taken it to the highest level. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they'll abide by the letters written mm -hmm. to date they have not. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to keep working. Exactly. On a much lighter note, Friday, October 29th at the library from three to five, we're going to have a little gathering for Karen, a little yeah. farewell retirement party for her. If you want to say hello, um, we'll all be there that Friday afternoon. Of the 29th? Of the 29th, that Friday from 3 to 5. Um, and to the public, trick or treat is still happening the night before Halloween. It's a go. And the Halloween parade, we are trying to organize. The people who are running it in the past are no longer doing it. Um, P. Gagnon is still willing to buy all the candy, but we need volunteers to put together. The packages for the kids and to pass it out and if you're interested in that please uh, reach out that's all i got okay thank you um unfinished business uh home for the holidays tree i think you had something to do with that right Diane? i am i'm the committee head of home for the holidays Status. um we are just um Waiting to see if we can do this. Uh, we same request, uh, the one that I gave you at um, the meeting that I presented at the beginning. Um, just looking to put a tree with the tree stand that Jeff Minahan has made. Uh, we have a timer. Um, we're just looking to put it. Let's see where we have it. Jeff, if I have correct, the location is on the front lawn of Town Hall, left side central walkway, centered. He, uh, between the two small maples centered between the mo uh, memorial and small maples. So those are just the possibilities that I have your Excel. Yeah, that, that's sort of where I was thinking, um, everybody, um, sort of on the side of the lawn that's closer to the driveway going into the town hall um, and kind of finding a, a sweet spot in there that's kind of center it on that lawn so it's not too close to the road, not too close to the driveway, and also a decent distance from that um, memorial. I went out there um, and sort of uh, measured out just preliminarily and figured if I if we had the trunk of the tree sort of in the center of the grass area, um, it would probably be about 15, 20 feet from anything, either the memorial, the sidewalk, the road, or the benches all the way around seemed like it'd be a, a good fit for placement. Tomorrow I'm, I'm going and, and actually scoping out some, some of trees to get some good measurements. If you guys are uh, 
are, are good with doing it in that place. Speaking with uh, code earlier with Joe, um, he did suggest uh, in the past that maple on this side, Jen? Closer to the end, I believe. Yeah, closer to the end. It's a big, it's a big okay. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't want to throw you under the bus, Mr. James, but are you still willing to help us light that tree if you if we are able to do this? Yes, ma'am, 100%. Excellent. We have the decision, I guess, Jeff, if we want to use Osgood agree, still I'm or I'm good do the actual tree that's in the ground, but upon approval, of course. Yeah. It's a big tree. There's a big tree. I think it was that's, big. yeah, that's what concerns me, honestly, not to have the whole conversation about it here, but I mean, that, that's a big tree. Um, I, I have, uh, I have lights, um, but I don't know if I have enough lights to to do a, a, a tree that belongs in a forest uh, like, like that. So uh, we'd have to do some, a little bit more there, but uh, whatever we want to do, I'm sure we can try and try and get it lit. Hey, are those lights still, it, where are those lights? And that, do they work? That, that light, since I've been on this council, that tree was lit. Yeah. Well, they're not very expensive. Well, the, other, the, the thing that we, um, Jeff has done too, because he's also in took pretty much charge of the tree stuff. Um, I'm just here presenting it on the behalf. He made a tree stand, am I correct? Or is it still in the process of being made for about a 10 to 15 foot tree that we were looking to place because we were possibly going to do the ornaments too? Yeah. Right, I was, I was going to, I was going to make it once I had, all, had the, uh, the tree. But we have a local place donate the tree because we're looking at we're working with Osgoods over on the chart. Yep, yeah. Um, so when, it was to when, support when, a local business as well. When, when are we thinking about having the tree land? We were looking at December 1st, um, but I want to actually move to move that to the day of home for the holidays, which is December 3rd, because it's like the night, the tree lighting. Are you guys, mm -hmm. Jeff and Jen, uh, Jeff and Jess, are you okay with that with just a nod? Okay, cool. I'm, I'm pulling my authority there. So December 3rd, um through january 9th which would have been 38 days maybe uh taking away the so, does that give you time to decorate it no so the no. third week of november right after thanksgiving you want to have the tree on the property here okay because you want to have a chance for it to settle on the ground make sure the ground's not going to shift under the tree to make sure the box doesn't move to make sure we have time to do it you okay. want to do right after thanksgiving you want to give it at least a week week and a half before the third Okay. That sounds good to me. I'm good whenever. So this yeah, is just a Christmas it. tree. It's not a permanent tree. No, just right. Christmas tree in a box. Yeah. Okay. When the seed, when it's over, they okay. take the box out and they replant the tree. Are you guys going to water it? I mean, oh, is, are we cutting the tree? Like we going to cut tree, Jeff? Um, I didn't really even put any thought into that. I mean, I thought either it was fine. Be the root ball. I don't. It doesn't we're, matter. We're not way. sure yet. It's either going to be a cut tree or a root ball, but it's going to be a removable tree either way. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um. As long as it's out of the way, and uh, I don't have any problem with it. Um, the last thing that the veterans will be doing will be Veterans Day. Day of probably November 11th. Mm -hmm. So that'll be the last ceremony that'll be that I know it'll be held out there. Yeah, and the tree will be after that. So yeah, right. good to go. Perfect. Thank you. So uh, do we have unanimous consent on the council that we're okay with the proceeding with the home for the holidays uh, Christmas tree? Yes. A holiday tree, excuse me. Mm -hmm. We gotta be we gotta be diverse if it's a holiday tree. It's a tree lighting tree. How's that? Yeah, well, <laughs> right. Light the night tree. I'm decorating a Christmas tree. I don't care what you all call it. <laughs> I'm decorating a Christmas tree, yeah. I have an image of that in my mind. <laughs> I'll wear my Santa suit. <laughs> oh, that I need to see though. That one. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. And um, John, I will tie in. We'll just coordinate with you for, for your assistance. That, that would be great. As soon as, soon as we I get closer, that. we'll I'll come to a meeting or whatever, and we can sit down and figure out the logistics of it. Sounds Excellent. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Uh, anything else on... Uh, the, the holidays tree. Okay, uh, medical uh, marijuana caregiver licensing. Any 
members of the public want to chime in on that topic. Okay, uh, we had a, a, a good meeting um, workshop with the planning board and town attorney. Uh, went over a bunch of interesting details with respect to you know, how we're defining things and how uh, what the municipal authority. Uh, to be uh, with respect, respect to regulations and uh, I'm still recognizing the uh, registered caregivers' rights of not prohibiting or limiting the registered caregivers. Uh, but there are some things we can do, and uh, it seemed to, the, to me the conclusion was to continue to pursue um, looking at towns like. Like Wyndham and Turner to have ordinances on the books and uh, gleaning uh, appropriate uh, uh, terms and conditions from, from those ordinances. Uh, I, I really feel that there's a before sending it off to the planning board that we should send them something, you know, rather than. Just saying, come up with something. I think that, that uh, the council should should try to um, put together a draft uh, to you know, at least as a starting point uh, that would help focus the task and make it uh, productive moving ahead. What would be needed in addition to the draft that I already made? So the draft that I had written maybe about a month ago and had directed them to create this. Well, that was a charge. That was a it charge. wasn't a draft ordinance. Correct. You want us to draft an ordinance to I, send yeah. to them. Okay. And, and, and it might, it, it, we might have to just uh, caucus and yeah. you know, take Linda and Turner and then say, okay, what do we, you know, what pieces and parts do we want to do? And then wordsmith that and send it off as a draft. Okay. Uh, that, that seems to make the most sense uh, because it's, uh, it, it also frames whatever words that would that we would approve as a charge. Okay. Do we want to set a workshop for when, or a date, or a timeline for when this draft should be estimated to be done? Well, seeing that I brought it up, I, I'm willing to draft something uh, mm -hmm. in, in my spare time. <laughs> And uh, and then I'd be willing to share it with you folks, and then see what it's okay. See what we have to say, and hopefully it'll be by by the next meeting. Okay, good. Uh, and uh, keep going that way. All right. Yeah. What do you think about that, John? I'm right with that. Mm -hmm. Could I say something, please? Sure, Barbara. Barbara Hopkins, uh, Wands Lane. Yeah, I'm sorry. I wasn't fast enough, Jack. <laughs> I, I'm looking for the hand. I'm looking for the hand to put up. Um, I I was just, you know, I've been involved with this quite a bit. And, um, you know, for people to be responsible with marijuana is just fine. Um, but we had some a situation here in our own neighborhood. And I was just wondering if it would be a good opportunity to bring in some public comment. Um, for people who are using and um, you know selling and whatever that you know they should not be affecting the quality of life of their neighbors and i thought maybe it would be an opportunity to ask people what are some of the things that are concerning like i know of a situation down on liberty where the growers are so close to the border that the neighbor smelt marijuana all summer long and um, and so we have small lots. Uh, the lawyer did mention possibility of setbacks. And I think that those kinds of suggestions, you know, maybe there are some other things that people would come up with, but it's an opportunity to bring in public comment. So, um, you know, not that they're gonna make the decisions, but what are some of the things that, you know, have um, caused some anguish, okay, already. So that's my comment, thank you. Okay. I would welcome the public then on that on that along those lines, Barbara. We've heard so far um, numerous examples of people having concern with 
business hours of operation, of canopy size, of smell. And those are what I originally drafted in the in the draft draft form of the planning board charge that we're, we're not going to do anything with at this point. Jack is now going to write a draft ordinance language for them. But anything in addition to those things, um, it now could be a good time to share that. Or if you could be in touch with Jack and the council with ideas, but that's just what I've gleaned from from months of listening. So we well, have, we I, I, I just know, like, for ex the one person, um, they, they are trying to have, um, if you will, a convening discussion with their neighbors for next growing season, that the experiment was not so good on my end. <laughs> so, you know, I know people are, um, I, you know, I go back to Robert Frost and good fences make good neighbors. Um, and it's hard when you're the neighbor and you're gonna live with this person next to you to confront them about things and they don't wanna necessarily speak up, but that's where I thought, you know, some kind of a, I don't know, a survey or just encouraging people to send some comments in about any anything else that we've not thought of. You know, the lights, I know lighting is another one, uh, dogs barking, you know, these are different things that we've heard. So, um, but that can happen in any neighborhood. Um, but anyway, I just thought it would be an opportunity to ask the public for that because you're working on the ordinance. Thank you. No limitation on what the comment might be from the public. I mean, it's it's an open book at this time. It's not a closed book. So if you have ideas, send them along with the understanding that there are things we cannot regulate. If I wanted to grow it next to Abby's house, I can grow 500 feet. I'm not a business. I'm not selling it. It's tough for Abby. So we just have to make sure that we're discussing apples to apples when we're discussing this, when we're getting the comments. I just want to make sure we're getting comments that are stuff we can actually govern, not the stuff outside of our purview. I don't, I don't want to get dragged down into stuff we can't look at, I guess, is what I'm going at. So send us feedback, send us ideas. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's how we'll proceed on this, I guess. That that's, makes the most sense. And, um, okay, uh, action on two business. Number one, action on GA General Assistance Ordinance Appendices. Is that the first? Um, I mean, uh, we have a 2021 general assistance maximum maximums reference sheet for your county HMFA, and uh, as the first item of supporting documents. So that that's the the text we need to. Uh, consider. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the general assistance maximums reference sheet for York County HMFA for October 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2022 as written. Second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion on the uh, proposed uh, maximums? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 That motion passes 3 0. Uh, Council member comments. None. None this evening, sir. Okay. Um, I attended a, a nice uh, reception. Uh, invited. Jennifer was there as well. Uh, we, we were introduced to the new CEO of York Hospital. Dr. Patrick Taylor, nice gentleman, and uh, we were able to spend some time with uh, other municipal officials uh, over at Outlook, and, and uh, it was a nice time. It was nice to meet, uh, meet Dr. Taylor, and it was put on by Ann Hussey, who's been working on all kinds of things for many, many years, and she's taken this on as an advocate, advocate for the hospital, and it was a very, very nice time. Nice to meet him. Wish you good luck. 
that's all I have. All right, um, Pat Robertson wanted us to mention they are seeking volunteers and suppliers this year for the um, Keep South Berwick Warm. The soup event is going to be takeout, but they need volunteers and people to cook and tasty things up. So contact Pat Robertson if you're interested. Um, and then October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And this year, I just wanted to do a special thanks to uh, our police officers and our first responders for the work that they do. A lot of this work is unseen, um, but it's vital. And I know that members of this community are really being taken care of um, by the excellent people we have working, working here. So I just wanted to recognize them. Good. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is to go into executive session. And uh, we have a motion. Mr. Chair, I move to go into executive session. Uh, it's MS, uh, MRSA section. One, one, one MRSA. One MSRA section 405.6A dash personnel. Second. Okay. Um, just as a note for anybody tuning in, this will be the last item on the agenda and uh, the non public session. And there'll be no other uh, items discussed when we come out of executive session other than adjournment. So thank you all for uh, for tuning in tonight. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes three zero.